Everybody, welcome back to another video and as you can see we have a little bit more effort going into this video I got some new equipment which is very very exciting I have this new camera we're using the good old Nikon camera to film this view I also have a really 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 nice light over here with a softbox but moving on in this video I am going to be making a zine for the first time in short a zine is an independently published magazine. A lot of like activist movements have used them in the past to distribute their information. A lot of artists use them to have a little collection of maybe illustrations or to tell a little story. Zines are really fun and the independent nature of them is something that's very cool to me. The way that they can be put together is so completely up to the creator. In preparation for going into this project, I decided to watch a class on Skillshare, who is the sponsor of this video, of course. The class was entitled, Making Your First Zine From Idea to Illustration, and it is by the illustrator Kate Bingaman Burt. I really enjoyed this class. This was probably one of my top experiences with a class on Skillshare because the teacher not only told us how to make a zine or like some of her pointers, but she also told us the history of zines, which was fascinating. I loved that part of the class. Then she also like brought us along with her as she went to different locations in her city where she was able to use their resources to make her own zine. It was a cool class and it really inspired me and I'm super ready to get into making zines. I'm really thankful for Skillshare because it opens my eyes um, to a lot of different ways of creating art and it inspires me to try lots of new things. If you guys want to have access to thousands of classes covering so many topics, drawing, painting, photography, just to name a few, then I invite you to try out Skillshare for free. Click the link in my description and if you are one of the first 1,000 people to do so, you will get a free month of Skillshare Premium and you can experience inspiration and new ideas like I have been able to enjoy from them. And while you're over there, don't forget to check out Kate's class, Making Your First Zine. Okay, so the zine that I'm going to be making today is going to be based on my memorialized series, which is actually on the wall. I'm sure many of you guys know what the series is already if you've been watching me for a while, but in short, this was my BFA senior show when I graduated from college, and the entire series focuses on memory and nostalgia and being grateful for the little moments of life and the people that pass through your life. I'm still adding to it, and I have been wanting to make a zine based on this idea. So I did a little preparation for this video. I wanted to try out a new technique which involved transferring a printed image to another piece of paper using acetone. It's called a Xerox transfer. You put the piece of paper that has the print on it face down on whatever paper you want to transfer it to. People go about this in different ways. I have been using just a bottle of acetone and I use a paintbrush put some acetone on the back of the page, and then I use a spoon to just really rub it in there. And it's taken me a lot of trial and error. You can see on this sheet how many times I've tried it out. My original idea was to print out black and white images of my paintings. I have a few sheets of them right here, but the whole idea of this series was to paint things with a very abstract, loose quality. Because it's already blurry, it ends up way blurrier on the other paper, and then it's just, you can't even tell what's happening. So that's what was going on on this side of the sheet. You just can't tell at all what these things are supposed to be. Then I got the idea, instead of using my paintings as pictures that I'm transferring, I decided to go to the place where the paintings came from, which are photos that I have collected on my computer, and then when I transfer it to the other piece of paper, it loses some of that clarity because it's just a transfer, but because it was sharper to begin with, you actually see what the image is supposed to be. That is how we've gotten to the point where I have printed out 
all the reference photos that I was able to find on my computer from the Memorialize series. I reversed each of the photos so that whenever I turn it over to transfer onto the other piece of paper, it will be the original orientation that it was in the original photograph. I also upped the contrast on them so that hopefully some type of form will be able to be visible on the transfer. And I spent all that time telling you guys about that because that's going to be the main subject of the zine. Here's my idea. I want to have the zine be made up of transferred images so it'll have the same effect as the Memorialize series. For my paintings, it was the paint that made the original photo more abstract. For the zines, it will be the transfer that makes the original photo more abstract. I like it to be abstract because I'm trying to represent memory. The fuzziness of memory, the way that you can't quite vividly, accurately picture things. Alongside those photos in the zine, I also want to be writing some things. And the theme of the zine is going to be things that I learned in college. So that's an overview of what I am about to do here today. Now for lettering on the zine, something that I learned from the video was I learned about rub on letters and numbers. What you do is you take maybe the end of an X-Acto knife or something that you can rub over the letter while it's on the piece of paper and the letter will be pushed down onto the piece of paper. And then I also bought a bunch of paper to print on. I really love the idea of using different colors of paper to print on. Okay, so how I think I'm gonna go about this first is planning what I want the zine to look like. And half, again. And again, you wanna be sure that your folds are really nice and precise my 11 sheet of paper, which makes it super like this. You pop the paper. Oh, so cool. And then you get your folds again. You want to be sure again that all your folds are nice. All right, so I have my template down. We have page one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm not sure if that's enough for me. I kind of think I'm gonna want more pages than that, um, but I'm just planning it out here and seeing how it's gonna go. Um, so for the rest of this, I want to listen to music while I work. So we're gonna pull out the old AirPods. Stay. 
After getting most of the pictures transferred, I started working on the cover page. I used the transfer technique once again to get the memorialized title on there. Then I finally got to bring out the rub on letters. I also wanted to put a picture on the cover right behind the title. So I blocked out the title and then I put the picture over that and again used the transfer technique to get it on there. Next, I started looking for text to put in this book. I didn't want the pictures to be the only thing in the book, and what I ended up doing was going through the notes on my phone, notes that I've written from the past four years, um, things that came from the top of my head, little poems that I had written, or phrases, things that I wanted to remember, and I found some of those, cut them out, and placed them throughout the zine. And then to tie the whole thing all together, I put a line of text at the bottom using the rub on letters. So each page that you turn continues the sentence from the page before. Finally, once all of that work was done, which took a little while, we are now about three or four days into this project, it was time to scan the pages so I could eventually make reproductions of them. And then last but not least is the printing process. In this video, I am not binding the zines. I do want to bind them in some way. I could use staples, and that is still an option, but I also want to look into some more fancy, some nicer type of binding. Um, so that will be happening outside of the video, but you basically got to see the whole process. My first zine has officially been made. I finished the original and I have that one here and then I have just made seven copies. I have it in the same color as the original which is more of an off-white kind of yellowish tinted paper and then I also have it in green, red, and blue. I just love holding them and like feeling the finished product, especially with the original one because the way that the pages are just like slightly warped from working with it so much and the texture of the text that I put on using the rub on letters, it draws attention to the fact that it is handcrafted, handmade. This has become a very special project to me. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I've been wanting to make my own zine for some time now, and after I finished the Memorialized series for my senior show, I knew that I wanted to continue it in some way, um, and then eventually I was like, I should make a zine for this, and now to finally have been able to do that, and for it to feel as personal and vulnerable and um, just special as it does. I'm really happy with it. These pictures are pictures that I've collected through the college years. There are segments, fragments of notes that I wrote down throughout the college years. Um, and it's just a peek into my world. And I would hope it's also a mirror um, or a reminder to appreciate the people and the little moments in your life. So. I'm very happy to announce that this will be in my shop when the video is posted. Just gotta click the link in the description um, if you would like to purchase your own. Very excited to share these with you guys and I hope you love them as much as I do. 
Um, and I'd also like to thank you guys for watching this video and coming along with me as I tried something new for the first time. That's all I have to say. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you guys enjoyed watching, don't forget to give a thumbs up and leave a comment letting me know what you thought. I would love to hear your thoughts. And also if you're new here and you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me and more art projects in the future. We're only gonna get better from here. All right guys, thank you and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Bye-bye.